Hello YouTube, this is part 2 of my series on light for uh, planted tanks and in this part I will be discussing the spectrum and what kind of spectrum you need to grow plants. So, a spectrum is basically the composition of wavelengths in a light bulb. So, what kind of wavelengths your light is producing will determine its spectrum. So a common term used is, is this light bulb a narrow spectrum or is it broad, spe broad spectrum? So a narrow spectrum, it's not going to produce a wide ranges of wavelengths. It's only going to produce a certain wavelength and it's going to be narrow. Um, whereas a broad spectrum light, it produces green, it produces blue, it produces red, it produces a lot of light. So it'll have a more broader spectrum. So that is the two terms that get thrown around, thrown around a lot and uh, different types of light bulbs will have different looking spectrums because it depends on the way they produce light so something like a metal halide um, it is a light coming from an arc of electricity so it has these weird spikes all over the place so it has a fairly broad spectrum and uh, they come in a lot of wavelengths but it will come in these uh, var variety of spikes um, something like a conventional white LED has a spectrum that looks something like this. So the reason white LEDs have a <clears throat> spectrum that looks like this is because a white LED is uh, fundamentally a blue LED. So it has this blue spike here. So a, a white LED chip is a blue LED and is coated in phosphor. So as this blue light hits this phosphor, some of that blue light continues to come out. And what this phosphor does is it fluoresces, so it's going to produce some yellow um, along the way here. So this this is what this spike he is here. So when these combine, it looks white to the human eye. So conventional LEDs will have a blue peak and a peak that is derived from this phosphor coating. Um, another type of LED is a RGB LED. And these LEDs are fundamentally different from these conventional white LEDs. RGB LEDs will still produce a white light, but they have a spectrum that looks like this. So they will have all three lights equally. So the way a RGB LED chip is configured, it is not a blue LED. It will actually have three separate chips inside one. So it will have a red chip, a green chip, and a blue chip. So they will have uh, basically three different lights coming out so they will have a different looking spectrum because they do not utilize a phosphor coating so LEDs can have spectrums that look like that and the fluorescent light bulb will uh, usually have these three spikes um, of uh, light they will have the red spike and a green spike and a blue spike and that is because fluorescent lights um, similar to uh, a conventional white LED is they are actually producing UV and the coating on the light bulb um, will turn this UV into either red or green or blue so they will have these three spikes so um, the spectrum the shape of the spectrum looks different depending on uh, the type of light bulb and something like the Sun has a continuous spectrum like this um, so this is within the visible range is about here so it will continue to have infrared um, a spectrum as well but it will have a pretty continuous uh, spectrum of light there and incandescent bulbs have a similar sh uh, similar shape in terms of spectrum they also have a pretty uh, wide range of infrared coming out so uh, this is why when you uh, when you hear some people say incandescent bulbs is the most similar to the Sun um, this is what they're talking about they're talking about uh, the shape of the spectrum so Another word that gets thrown around to represent spectrum is color temperature. It is represented by this unit K. It's uh, red kelvins. Um, uh, this basically tells you what the hue of the uh, light bulb is. Light bulb is. So, if you go out there and buy a light bulb, it will uh, it either say like daylight white, just regular white, or warm white, or cool white, um, and they will have these uh, kelvin values. Um, given the manufacturer will uh, label them as such so a warm white light light bulb is more like has a warmer hue so it is more red more orange and a cool white bulb it has more blue so it'll look cooler so it'll be uh, more slightly blue um, and 
the uh, Kelvin units will be typically around 4,000 for a warm white bulb. It'll be around 6,500 to 7,000 Kelvins for a white bulb, and about 8,000, 9,000 for a cool white bulb. Um, so, what does this uh, Kelvin rating tell us in terms of uh, the spectrum? Is um, it actually doesn't tell you much because it depends on how the light bulb produces light itself. So, a uh, same uh, cool white light bulb will have drastically different spectrum depending on whether it's LED or a uh, fluorescent light bulb. So a regular white uh, LED will have a spectrum that looks something like this as I uh, explained before and a cool white it will actually have a, a higher blue peak and a lower yellow peak so it will uh, have less of a peak here so it shifts the light towards the blue side so that is why it will have a cooler looking color whereas a warm white LED it will have a shorter blue and a larger yellow so it will shift towards the red side of the spectrum and so that is why it produces a warm light and although to the human eye a, a warm white light bulb of a fluorescent bulb uh, would look quite similar its spectrum will look completely different so a regular white um, uh, fluorescent light bulb, it will have pretty equal amounts of red, green, and blue. So uh, it will have a spectrum that looks something like this. If it's a cool bulb, it will have more blue and less red. And if it's a warm white uh, fluorescent light bulb, it will have more red and less blue. So depending on the type of light bulb, um, the Kelvin doesn't tell you much about the shape of the spectrum. It just tells you whether it is more towards the red side or more towards the blue side. So um, let's actually discuss what type of light uh, plants can actually use. I guess this is the one that you guys are probably the most curious about. And to start off, we'll take a look at the chlorophyll absorption spectrum. So uh, chlorophyll is actually the pigment that picks up light. Um, so chlorophyll, what light chlorophyll absorbs can tell us quite a bit about what light plants can use. So there's chlorophyll A, there's chlorophyll B, and there are accessory pigments called carotenoids. Um, this is the absorption spectrum uh, of these different pigments. So chlorophyll A has a pretty strong red peak here. This is the red area, and this is the blue area. And same story for chlorophyll B, it has a slightly different absorption spectra, but it absorbs mainly the red and blue lights. In carotenoids, um, they absorb blue to yellow. They are in that range there. So uh, plants, you can see by the chlorophyll absorption spectrum that chlorophyll as a pigment, the main pigment in leaves, um, they pick up mostly red and blue. Um, they're not so good at picking up the green and the yellows. So look at the, uh, a plant, you look at the leaf, it's going to have these cells and inside the cells there's going to be the chloroplast which is the organ that produces light and in the chloroplast you're going to have these pigments called chlorophylls and these uh, pigments are what absorb the light. They're going to pick up that light um, that's coming from the sun, they're going to drop it into the photosynthesis machinery and that is going to produce sugar. So. In terms of actual photosynthesis, what people discovered is that ultimately the photon that goes into the photosynthetic machinery is a red photon. So what drives photosynthesis is the red color. Plants will take light of, of this other spectrum, they'll switch it around and they'll produce a red photon. A red photon will go in to the photosynthetic machinery and that is, that is what drives that machine to produce sugar. So what people thought is if uh, we gave the plants red light, um, that is what drives photosynthesis, so uh, plants will grow. So people did experiments where they used only red, and uh, the plant, it did not grow. It did not grow very well, its growth was stunted, it will grow, it will grow in a weird shape. And uh, because of uh, this uh, absorption spectra that we saw previously, it's most, mostly red and mostly blue, people thought, okay, maybe the plant, we can use a little bit of blue in there. So people uh, used red and blue lights, uh, red and blue, and that actually grew the plant quite well. The plant uh, grew to a normal size and it displayed a normal behavior. 
So people thought, okay, it's really good. So um, if we give just red and blue light, we can have a really efficient way of growing plants. So people are trying to figure out what is the most efficient way to grow plants and why give the plant a light uh, that it can't use and instead you can use that same energy to produce only light that plants can use. So people thought um, if we just have a blue and red system, um, we can have a really efficient way of growing plants. So because we're not giving them any of the green or the yellow, the yellow that the plants can't use. And later people experimented with actually adding a little bit of green in there. And turns out the plants grew even better. So uh, this kind of puzzled people at first because... Uh, if you look at the chlorophyll spectrum, it looks like the plants can't really use green that much, but adding green actually resulted in even better growth. So, uh, what's going on here? So, um, it turns out, um, more recent studies, um, so basically, uh, the chlorophyll itself, in terms of absorption, in terms of what it can actually uh, absorb, it's mostly around the red and the blue part. Um, but if you move on to a more complex system, like this is just looking at a microscopic part of a plant. It's just the tiny chloroplast. If you just focus there, they are uh, absorbing just the blue and the green lights mostly. But if you move on to a whole leaf and you study the whole leaf, it turns out it's a different story. Actually, the green light is able to produce quite a bit of photosynthesis. So if uh, life is much more complex than we see, so if you just focus zoom in at the chloroplast it seems like they're only using red and blue but if you just uh, move out a little bit and if you take a look at the leaf turns out they can use red they can use blue and they can also use the green and yellow quite a bit almost as good as the red and blue not quite as good but it's almost as good and if you move on to the entire plant and you study how light uh, works in an entire plant it turns out there isn't really that big of a difference of course this is going to depend on the species of plant that you're growing and its growing environment but it turns out red, green, blue doesn't really matter that much. Plants will uh, pretty much, um, they'll take the light that you give them and try to use it the best they can. So as long as you're giving it uh, a decently varied spectrum, plants don't care so much. Okay, so another word that gets tossed around a lot when talking about spectrum is the color rendering index. And uh, it's basically a unit that uh, is maximum at 100 and it it represents like how full of a spectrum the light is and uh, so a good color rendering index means that something shows up uh, its proper colors so let's say you have like a light that only has red and blue like it's a red and blue light it's a narrow spectrum this is a spectrum here this would obviously have a low color rendering index everything will look purple on this under this light like something red will look purple, something blue would look purple, like everything would look purple. Whereas a good color rendering index light would have some blue, some cyan, some red, some yellow. So all of that, that will result in the colors showing up more properly. So um, if you have like a low color rendering index light, like uh, some classic fluorescent lights, um, you would notice that some things look kind of different. Their hue looks a bit off under a certain light bulb. Uh, so that is what happens when you have a low color rendering index. Um, it doesn't tell you much about how exactly the spectrum is set up, but a high color render, render index, index suggests that it has a very varied and uh, a fuller spectrum. So it's something to consider. Um, it won't really affect your plant growth that much, but uh, it will mean your tank will look better. And does that matter to you? Um, I don't think it matters too much to me, but it may be something that you want to look into. Um, so to summarize, as long as um, you have some form of visible light in a reasonably varied spectrum, plants will grow. Um, they don't care too much. It's green, red, yellow, blue, whatever. If you give them the light, they will figure out how to use it. Um, is there an ideal spectrum? Probably. There, you could probably figure out like the, the exact amount of blue and the green and the reds that just um, makes the plants grow better. But that's going to depend on the setup, it's going to depend on the species, species of plant. Um, there are too many variables, so it's going to be difficult to just to figure out what the ideal spectrum is. So um, in terms of will plants grow, um, it's pretty easy to figure that out. But what would be the optimal spectrum to have the most efficient light that will result in the best growth? Um, that's more difficult to figure out, and that will be up to... Um, too many variables to just say like this like 
uh, 70% red, like 20% blue, 10% green is like the optimal spectrum. It's, it's kind of hard to say that when it comes to um, the whole tank. Um, and uh, basically, in the end, um, if a light looks white to your eyes, um, it has to be mixed. Like you can't have a super narrow spectrum with like just red, green and something else and like end up with a white light. There has to be some blue, some red, like something in between. There has to be some mix to end up with a light that looks white. So as long as the light looks white, that means there is a reasonably a varied spectrum. Um, some light bulbs will be more varied, some light bulbs will be less. But um, as long as it's white, plants will grow. So if you ever look at a light bulb and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if this will grow plants, you just pop it in and turn it on. Does it look white to your eyes? Then, well, plants will grow. Will it grow well? That's a different question, but they will grow. So, um, in the end, uh, what, uh, the summary is, it looks white, it's okay. As long as you're giving it enough of that, it will grow. Warm white, blue, like cool white, regular white, whatever, like, it's just a personal preference. Some plants may, be, may do better in warm white, some plants may do better in cool white, but like, in the end, it'll still work. So... Um, the conclusion here is you shouldn't obsess too much about spectrum. Um, as long as it's reasonably mixed, um, plants will grow. And if you want to figure out like what is optimal, it's much more difficult to answer that question. And you're just going to have to experiment for yourself in, uh, within your setup and the species of plants you're working with. Uh, so that concludes this part. In the next part, I will talk about a very controversial topic, which is uh, watts per gallon. Uh, thanks for watching.